we got this uh, we received this 190 SL engine uh, and with instructions to rebuild it uh, evidently it had been a low mileage car um, but they said but the engine had been previously rebuilt and this poor engine looks like an exercise in how not to treat a 190 SL engine I'm going to try to cover as much as I can give you an idea what you're not supposed to do in terms of rebuilding these um, 50s and 60s and 70s Mercedes engines alright what we have here is the oil pan um, and you can tell by the lack of sludge that it was uh, had not been running very much had not been serviced very much but the, the sludge is dark but there's not much of it usually uh, after many years in service you'll get about an eighth of an inch or quarter inch of sludge but in this case there's hardly any in there but what is in there indicates poor oil change uh, practices another thing we don't like is to see RTV um, you have uh, this blue RTV which uh, might be great for a f uh, small block Chevy but it's not very good for these engines and the problem that you run into is the RTV squishes out um, zoom in on that it will squish out on the outside and on the um, inside of the engine it's potential for this stuff to break off and get clogged in the um, oil filter and what it what passes through the oil filter actually will um, I've, I've dug this out of the camshaft before after they've destroyed engines so we don't use RTV use uh, number two Permatex or um, a Yama bond uh, let's see another thing that uh, we found is interesting is the pistons were fairly uh, low mileage uh, as well minimal scuffing on the sides here but we went to check to see if the pistons uh, how they done in terms of the machine work notice that let's see um, this is a 2000s feeler gauge and you want one and a half to two thousandths clearance between the piston and the uh, bore in the block and so if you get uh, one and a half thousandths or two thousandths clearance this piston should not go in here and should hang up but as you can see it goes right down so we've got a lot more than the proper amount of clearance so that would be uh, noisy pistons another thing that uh, I see uh, fairly frequently is on the intake manifold for the 190 SL the hope that you can see this they these rubber gaskets that go here have a tendency to collapse after with age or if you use the wrong gaskets and don't use the factory gaskets and for some people for some reason people think that indenting with a punch all around here is going to do something to help keep the gasket from migrating and it won't it um it just uh gives you something to do with a punch in, in your spare time and um, doesn't do a darn thing for the gas for holding the gasket in place now let's move over here to the rest of the engine All right. now we're gonna take a look at sprockets uh, this this sprocket um, is was looks like it was fairly it should have been fairly new uh, compared to all the other sprockets but you'll notice the what we're looking at here is the teeth the, um, the how square the teeth are supposed to be um, you can see the extreme the tremendous difference in squareness of the teeth also in the valley right here you see wear and uh, no uh, this is on the new sprocket you don't see anywhere at all so you can see where this sprocket has worn and that's because I believe it's because they did the used the wrong installation on the timing chain tensioner uh, this uh, gasket was used obviously with lots of blue silicone in addition to this rubber o-ring and it's an either-or situation you don't if you have the the old style timing chain tensioner was flat completely flat across here and would use this style of gasket now the new style of uh, timing chain tensioner has a groove in here and you use a rubber o-ring now if you use both of these at the same time and you stack them on top of each other that means your tensioner is not gonna um, provide enough tension on the timing chain 
and which in my opinion is what happened and the end result was the um, timing chain was loose and it dug out uh, some portion of some of the aluminum inside here and I'll show you that when we um, flip it over on the other side um, now I want to flip the head over all right now the thing that uh, you saw in the oil pan the uh, the sludge well part of that um, pr um, problem with lack of oil changes is the dirt that you're going to get circulating in through here and what we're looking at here is the main bearing and the main bearing shell and this is supposed to be shiny silver white looking metal and it's 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 tarnished now and it's and I don't believe that is from sitting around for a long time this engine I believe was in storage for quite a while and then you can see the copper backing underneath which is underneath this uh, uh, layer that that the crankshaft rides on and so when the this layer gets worn out and used you get down to the copper and you're not supposed to get down to the copper uh, that's that's too far uh, too much wear and you can see it more dramatically here on the thrust on the uh, side of the, the bearing shell uh, where the crankshaft uh, hits up against here and all this pitting hopefully you can see it in the, in the camera all that pitting is uh, from sitting around for, for too long oh let's see let's go over to connecting rods small end of the connecting rod where the wrist pin goes they used the wrong bushings in here uh, this is a split bushing I don't know where it came from or why, but the original that's supposed to be in there is a solid brass bushing to go in the small end of the <clears throat> connecting rod. Crankshaft also shows evidence of dirt and trash and lack of oil changes. Now you may not be able to see it on the video very clearly, but this journal in particular is really chewed up. Uh, it's supposed to be shiny, uniform. Uh, beautiful and if you take your fingernail and you can rub across here and you can feel any kind of grooves <clears throat> that means that your um, uh, journal needs to be machined same thing back here you can see how, how um, you know probably doesn't show up but anyway use your fingers to um, determine how uh, rough the surface is all right now we're gonna take a look at the cylinder head which is really critical and which everybody seems to want to screw up the most. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the thickness of the cylinder head. Original thickness is 3 inches 346. Minimum thickness is 3 inches 309. That's the thickness right here. There's only so much material that they're going to give you and only so much that you can take off. And what, how you determine this is you use your micrometer and you measure the cylinder head. Now then, the reason for the minimums uh, is the fact that the um, intake valves are, are almost flush with the surface of the head and the pistons come up slightly above the surface of the, the um, deck of the block. And so if, the, if you don't have the proper clearances, your pistons and your valves are going to meet and uh, they're going to destroy things. Now let's take a, a tour real quick. Uh, what they did to this cylinder head this poor little cylinder head. I took measurements at um, All at, at six points. So we got uh, the remember the original is three three forty six We have three three fifteen here three three nineteen This is three three ten three three seventeen three three twenty nine three three twenty five now original ideally these dimensions should be the same all the way across here, the same thickness. And not only have they screwed up the, head, the cylinder head uh, by milling it when it was warped, but they, they milled it crooked, so, so it's, it's now wedge-shaped. This, this part is thicker than this section over here. Um, and this is thick, and this is thin, and this is 3.310, uh, which is just one thousandths above the minimum uh, in terms of what that means to you uh, one thousandths of an inch uh, is is half if you take a human hair and split it in half that's uh, one thousandths of an inch and I give you an idea of how um, right on the ragged edge we are now another now the, the problem that stems from the the heads warp these aluminum heads like to warp and what you're supposed to do is you take your straight edge 
this is an actual precision straight edge and you put it on here and you check to see if there's any warpage in here if the head is crooked if it's warped now this head is is not warped because it has been milled even though it's milled incorrectly it is flat problem comes uh, when let's flip it over the problem be, uh, that is going to happen is if you don't take the head and straighten it out before you mill it you're going to have a head that's usually warped uh, bowed like this in the middle so what you do is you end up uh, milling here and milling here until you finally touch in the middle and then next thing you know you've got a head that's flat here but you're totally screwed up on this surface on the top and that can be demonstrated by your straight edge again and if you and what we can do is we'll we can rock the straight edge back and forth and that represents um let's see if you can even see it here lower this down and what we're doing is looking at the the gap right here all right I don't know. Let's see if you can see that or not yeah you can see that okay that represents a huge gap in the um, the straightness of the head and that's going to make it a real problem for um, the valve cover to seal properly and it's going to be a real problem for our camshaft and our cam towers so they uh, they then they uh, they assemble the engine with this uh, extremely uh, warped head and what you do is you take your your um, camshaft towers and they, they fit up on top of the head like this and they fit up on top of the head like this and they fit up on top of the head like this and then you come along and you you tighten them down here and here and then you, you and then you run your head bolts down through here and snug everything down well what happens if this is warped and you got a camshaft in here that's trying to st uh, be straight and, uh, the, and you're, you're crooked from this side to this side well what happens when you when you tighten everything down well that's is, this is what happens this you can see how old this uh, this corrosion is in here this thing was broken for a long time and uh, it's just ridiculous so these towers come as a match set because they're all a line board in the, in the same plane and um, so now we've got to get new um, cam towers and as I telling you earlier uh, one of the consequences of the chain being in, in such bad uh, the chain tensioner not being uh, the correct tensioner uh, installation well one of the consequences is maybe you can see down here the tracks right down here where the timing chain was so loose it it was flopping around and digging into the aluminum uh, cylinder head. So that is just. Oh yes, also, also we um, we got this old old head gasket. Uh, I don't know. This thing is. I have no idea how old this is. I haven't seen these in in probably 15 or 20 years. And these head gaskets were really crappy when they were when they came out, and they're no good to use what you need is a new style head gasket of new composite materials and also has a racing stripe around here of, of red sealant material and uh, the, uh, what you can do is you can take your head gaskets and you can read the head gasket to see um, if your head and the block and gasket were leaking and what you're looking for is this fire ring to be real shiny bright red uh, bright silvery shiny looking and where it isn't is where you had leakage and this this dark spot here indicates leakage and here's some here's a dark spot here indicates leakage so um, all in all I would say this was a this engine was a 
testimony testament to how to screw up the rebuild on a 190 SL engine and uh, make it more difficult for those that uh, come behind us. Thank you.